Hi everybody, Olivia here. Today's in tutorials, I wanted to give you a quick overview of DevonThink Pro Office. If you've never heard of DevonThink before, know that it is uh, such a versatile application that it can be used in many ways. You can use it as an alternative to Evernote, for example, because DevonThink allows you to keep snippets, online snippets, and also have a very good web clipper. And it integrates really well with your Mac because you can execute uh, simple commands with Apple Script, and it is a Mac only application. You can use it as a research tool. Uh, it has a plethora of features that allows you to capture information easily, as well as process this information efficiently uh, with the added artificial intelligence feature. You can use it as a file management system because you can keep everything in different things every type of document and find your data very, very easily because of this uh, research feature. It's quite extensive in DevonThink. DevonThink also allows you to go paperless easily as the Office version integrates really well with various scanners and include optical character recognition for your documents. So now let me take you to DevonThink. I have the DevonThink Pro Office version, which is a higher end version of the application. So you can see how the user interface looks like. So first, let's go through the first um, menu bar, the top bar. First, you can see the navigation tab where you can decide whether or not to show um, your databases. Then you have different views available to you. You have kind of an icon view of your files, just like this. You have also a list view a three panel view, my favorite view, this is my favorite view where you can just uh, see your files and then um, the documents attached to them very simply. So I like this view, it's the mo most common view that you will find in most uh, note applications. And you have another three panel view where you can see your files right underneath. So just clicking here, you can see your database, you can see your, your folders, and then you can see your files within your folders. Then you have the tag view, what here you can have, you can see your tags here, as well as information um, connected to those tags. Uh, then you have the actions tab, where you can define what to do with the document that you're working on. You can open the URL, because this is an actual URL, you can but basically you can duplicate it to another database or you can replicate. So the difference between duplicate a document and replicate a document, duplicate you will have two versions of the document that are both separate version that can be edited separately and whatever uh, changes you do in one document will not transfer to the other one, to the duplicated document. Replicating a document is almost like indexing a document in the sense that it will be the same version of the document uh, replicated in another folder, which means that the changes that you do in one document will reflect in the other document that's been replicated. So that depends on your workflow and how you want to work. You can also label a document. Uh, you know, you can change the labels as, as it fits your workflow. I like that because I'm a very visual person, I need colors to organize myself. So this helps, especially if you're doing things like GTD, this is very helpful. You can mark your document as flagged, locked, or, or unread because you can protect and lock your document. You can send them documents by email, you can create thumbnails, you can convert them to different format, to rich text, plain text, formatted note, HTML, PDF, searchable PDF. You can group your items, obviously, and you can auto-classify. The auto-classify, uh, option is great if you're quite lazy you don't want to have to go through a bunch of documents um, it will use artificial intelligence to do that but you can just choose a bunch of document and click auto classify and it would just distribute a document where it belongs in your um, database so it's very handy if you don't have the time to do that and if you trust the the software enough i mean for me it's always been quite accurate because the software will look at keywords in your document and things that are relatable to other documents and then put them together. So it's quite logical, really. 
And then you can sort your document by name, kind, label, flag, date, added, date created, date modify, size. I mean, it's, it's great in terms of organization. Then you have your Apple scripts here. This is also cool. You can send, for example, you can uh, export your document to Evernote if you're working with Evernote. I personally use both software, so I like to be able to export my note to Evernote. Then you have your label here if you want to put them on your this part. And you can create different type of document, rich text document, plain text document, formatted note. Let me see if there's any other. It customize the toolbar. Yeah, so plain text, rich text, formatted document. Uh, you can create tables also. Um, not table per se, but sheets that I will show you in a minute. But this is all the, all the options you have when it comes to your toolbar, so it's pretty cool. And note also that all these documents are, are saved in their own format. So if you export your documents, it will be exported in their original format. Devon thing, do not convert your document in some sort of proprietary format. And this is um, really great if you tend to share your documents quite a lot. It's just easier to just ret retrieve your document that way. You can also highlight your documents, of course. Um, Create sheets. So this is a sheet. I'll show you a sheet quickly. You can't create a table per se. Okay, this you're gonna have to go to Evernote to do that. But to create a sheet, this is a sheet. So you you just it's like a record. You know, if you wanna do some sort of an analysis or some sort of a, a report. For me, for example, this is my amount of views on my YouTube channel. So I just put them here on the. I just create a new record and I can just. Um, add my data that way. You can add new tags. So I like the way the tag function in Devon thing because it reminds me of Evernote because you can create group of tags. You see, I've done that here. Uh, I created group of tags and you can create as many subgroups as you like. And this reminds me of Evernote quite a lot if you work with tags rather than um, this type of folder, subfolder organization, then this won't be a foreign to you if you come from Evernote. So you have the ability to do both if you like. And, and this is something I really like about Devon Thing because I have a choice of whether or not I want to organize my content with tags or groups, subgroups, or both. You can also create smart groups. Smart groups are groups that are um, kind of intelligent groups where you set conditions. Uh, you can, for example, have all your image, all your PDF files together. You can have, if you're using GTD, you can have in one group documents or tasks that are marked as a certain a status or that are um, labeled a certain way. So for example, you can label an amount of tasks as to-dos and then create a smart folders that just group all your to-dos together across your entire database. So that's really, really cool. And uh, that allows you to organize your tasks that way. So here you can see all your database. I would define them as a group of file, you know, database. They're not real database uh, as you would define them normally. It's just a group of files. So for me, I just think about them as kind of upper level categories. So I have, for example, productivity, recipes, uh, self-development, wellness, work, you know, those categories that you create to uh, help you organize your content. As simple as that. Each database can have its own set of properties. They're all separate from one another. You can put them anywhere you like, on your disk, on an external. You can't put them on the cloud, but you can back them up on the cloud. I back up all my databases on Google Drive and it does it automatically. I use Get Backup Pro, an application that does it for me at a set time that I set. It just backs up my data for me so I don't need to think about it. However, if you want to sync it to Devon Thing to go, which I do, I use Dropbox for that. And Devon Thing will create a uh, sync package for the application. It's quite simple to go through and it syncs really flawlessly and, and quite quickly too. So you can share each database and add a password. So whoever wants to access your database will go online through the web application and put in the password and they'll be able to edit the documents and read the documents, reorganize, etc. according to the authorization that you set, okay? This is a global inbox. So here you can collect all the information that you would while you are surfing the net or, you know, you're using the uh, sorter. This is a sorter here, you know, or you're using the web clipper. 
this is the web clipper here it is not as good as Evernote but it is honestly fine I mean I have no problem using the sorter it does just as much as Evernote does you can even uh, simplify articles with Instapaper uh, through DevonThink uh, you don't have to pay anything for that. It's just it's just an added uh, option for you, and it will clean up all the junk, all the clutter, all the ads of your articles, and you'll be able to have a better reading experience. You can drop things directly to the icon, to the Devon thing icon here, and it will appear in your inbox. You also have some bookmarking option here that you can add to your bookmark bar, and the, just by clicking those, you can add selected documents, selected pages to Devon Thing. You can archive, bookmark, save PDFs to Devon Thing or click to Devon Thing. Then here in this panel here you have all your folders and subfolders and documents and tags available. You have an inbox available for all your databases. What I've done is that I put all my uh, databases in a sorter here like this. You can have it as a list so you can have it like that as squares but I prefer it as a list. So when I serve the net or anything else and I find information I can just drag and drop the information in the uh, uh, available inbox here in the sorter. Okay so here you can see that you have access to all your documents, all your folders, subfolders. You can change the little icons here by clicking um, get info and then drag and drop an image in this little uh, circle here and you will have a new image if, if that helps you to organize yourself and makes it a bit more appealing to the eye is better for organization too uh, so here I have um, all my files available to me this is the view that I prefer this is a PDF uh, file you can annotate your PDF also so let me click on it for you to see here you have all the annotation tools that you might need to annotate your PDF on the top part here so you can I don't know <laughs> annotate your PDF as you would uh, with Evernote it's not as nice obviously eh? I'm not gonna save that in the iris version you have a full annotation feature um, that is better than the one on the computer but this one will do fine if you're a student you, you know you just need to make quick notes and highlight notes and things it has all the features that you need to do that so Devon Think Pro offers retails for $149.95 which is not cheap <laughs> however I think that it is worth the price because it's a one-time fee and you have access to all further upgrades for free so no monthly fee in sight and you know those little fees can really add up to a lot of money at the end of the day so I really think that it is worth the $150 that you're gonna spend one time it's a very powerful app and it will do a lot of good things for you. Devon Think and also seems quite complicated when you look at the app. It's a very feature rich app. Uh, therefore, it requires a little bit of a learning curve. However, it is worth it. And once you understand how to use the main features, then I really believe that you won't be able to be without it. But by experience, I can say that it took me maybe two or three days to really get around to it. It's not that complicated. Um, and you have a lot of help through the website, the resources, and there are a book that's called, let me find it. Getting started with Devon Thing 2 that you can purchase separately. That will really kind of go through the main features of Devon Think. But I really don't think that it is that difficult to use. So who is this application for? The app, I would say, is for professional students. If you're a researcher, pastors and priests, journalists, lawyers, teachers, lecturers, and anybody who needs to process a lot of information. If you're looking for an all-around app to take notes, keep web snippets, compile documents, archive your workflow and even create simple document then I, I think that different thing will be great for you I use it for almost everything as I said it has replaced in a lot of way Evernote um, I don't use it to create for example complex document um, like blog posts and scripts and things like that uh, because I, I choose to use Scrivener for that but I could use Devon Think if I wanted to so it is a really good all-round app, but if you need to create more complex things like a book 
or things like that, I will still recommend something geared towards writers like Scrivener, for example. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope that this was useful to you. I hope that you will find value in this video. Please don't forget to subscribe and leave your comment down below if you have any other alternative to this application or if you have your own tricks and tips when it comes to using it. It was a pleasure serving you today and I will see you in the next video. Bye!